Okay, so this is the uh, the second heads up match between uh, me and Nick Stock Trader, and uh, <sighs> and uh, right now I've been kind of taking a bit of a break from poker. I've been a little bit a uh, little bit burnt out myself, but uh, we're gonna do one last match here, and I've got to kind of take off to take care of some business stuff here and that. And for uh, this uh, this particular match here, I don't really have any. Uh, you know, particular plans uh, for what I'm going to be doing here, dealing with Nick. I'm going to be playing a lot of my hands. I've been really reviewing a lot of the uh, the numbers I do have in the big blind play and stuff like that. And this is a board where I'm actually going to just go ahead and then make a bit of a move, uh, assuming that there is a portion of his range he's going to give up, and I don't think at this point he's going to go ahead and come over top with something like Queen Jack. So I'm getting a good price to bluff there. So, and even though I may be a little bit burnt at this point, I've been playing enough poker for the last uh, you know, month and a half or so, that uh, at this point uh, I'm gonna, probably going to be pretty sharp. Uh, so hopefully it's going to uh, you know show a good result. I could come over top there and uh, try to make him fold something like Ace Jack. Um, and I'm actually just going to put in a check call in the end. He may value better worse hand anyways, and my equity there is not actually that fantastic. Uh, but I'm certainly going to continue at least that far. And we are doing a freeze out for uh, uh, 200 bets. Uh, but we're just going to have Nick reload at some point. He's waiting for a transfer into the uh, the stock trader account. Apparently, isn't getting much use these days. Uh, so he's just going to have to have another hundred dollars moved in. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to re-raise here. And uh, this is a uh, somewhat bluffable board, so I'd like to give him a chance to give up on it if he does have a worse hand there. And then I'd have to decide between taking a free card or uh, just uh, uh, continuing to bet on the turn, depending on how many bets I think would have to commit. If he peels this one. Um, you know, Nick is in a very loose peeler, which is something I'm going to be able to use to my advantage. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, check. Uh, I may call one bet, but then fold to a second bet. I'm certainly not going to value bet. The 10 is a pretty bad card for me. Anything that I think he would actually peel the flop with is a hand that I think now has a piece. So if he does bet, I will uh, give it up. So... Again, I don't really have any particular game plan going into this matchup. Uh, there's, uh, you know, there's a bit of information out there. If I had uh, no flush draw here, I would actually just check behind. But I'm going to go ahead and bet, and then I'm going to uh, just re-raise and uh, just take my options as they come on the turn. It certainly puts me in a good spot, uh, kind of regardless. And if he caps on the flop or if he leads, I have enough equity that really I, I don't really care. Um, so yeah, again, with no particular game plan, there are a few things I'm going to want to try and do to experiment. These videos are good for me too, in the sense that I get to kind of see how Nick responds to the things I'm doing. Um, so he checks behind a flop like this, and I certainly don't believe he's giving up on a uh, do seven six flop. So I'm going to check it to him, and actually, uh, rather than take my shot at it, I could also try and check raise him. Is an option. I don't think he, uh, you know, he might fold, uh, you know, a pair of fives, or maybe I had a deuce or some sort of small pair there. Um, might be reasonable, or maybe ace high. In fact, the check raise is probably not all that bad.